Hey, this is Mr. Mason Ed, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to practice writing a linear equation in y equals mx plus b form when given a function table that shows a linear relationship. So the first thing that we want to do is rewrite our equation y equals mx plus b. Now, when you guys are trying to write an equation in this form, really all you're looking for is the value of m in the value of b. So when you state your answer, the y is going to stay a y and the x is going to remain an x. So we're really just looking for the m and looking for the b. However, sometimes we might have to plug in a value for the x and the y in order to determine what the value of b is. Now let's review what the m and the b stand for in our equation. So the variable m in our equation represents the slope of a line. And the slope of a line can be defined as the vertical change, which means going up and down, as compared to the horizontal change of a line. Now, the vertical axis is the y-axis. And that's why we always look at slope as the difference between a couple of y values on your line and the corresponding x values on your line. So if we were to take any two points from our table and subtract their y values and then subtract their x values for the denominator, that would give us our slope or rate of change. That's another thing that you're going to hear about slope used interchangeably is the rate of change. And it's how the y values are changing as compared to the x values expressed as a ratio. Now, when your numbers are in a table form, there's a really easy way to do this. And we really do not have to be this formal with our equation. But essentially, what we are about to do is the same thing as this equation. So what we're going to do first is we're going to select two different points from our table here. So let's just go ahead and pick this point here, 0, 13, and this point here, 1, 16. And we're going to start by finding the difference between the y values. So if we were to start at 13 and go to 16, that would be an increase of 3. And then if we start at 0 and go to 1, that would be an increase of 1. Now, if you take a look here, if we were to subtract our second y and our first y, that would give us 3. And that's where the y2 minus y1 comes from in the slope formula. And if we were to do the same thing with the x's, our second x minus our first x that we chose would give us a difference of 1. So what we're going to do is we are going to replace the m in this equation with the slope of 3 over 1. The change in y's is 3 compared to the change in 1 for the x's. Now, when we're dealing with slope, though, we should write our slope in simplest form. And we would say that 3 over 1 is equal to 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation here and we're going to substitute the variable m with 3. And for now, we're going to leave y a y, x an x, and b a b. All right, now the next thing that we have to do is figure out what the letter b is going to be equal to. And b in our formula is what we call the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is where our line is going to cross the y-axis. So say you have your x-axis here and y-axis to form a coordinate plane. And then let's say that you have a line that is crossing the y-axis at this point right here. Whatever the y value is at that point is going to be the value for b. Now, one thing that we should know about any y-intercept is this. No matter where it lies on the y-axis, whether it be here or here or here, we should notice that any point located directly on the y-axis will always have an x value of 0. So whether it be this point, this point, or this point, notice if we go down to the x-axis right here, the x value is going to be 0. So let's say, for example, this is positive 1 for the y value, and this is positive 2. The coordinates at this point right here would be 0, 2. Now the reason I bring this up is because if you ever see a point in your function table where you have 0 for an x, 
then its corresponding Y value will be your Y intercept. So you can automatically take that number and you can replace it with the variable B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our variable B here and I'm going to replace it with the value of 13. And this equation right here represents the linear relationship that is in this table. Now, how can we check it for accuracy? Well, what should happen is this. If we were to take any point that's in our table and plug in their corresponding x and y values into our equation, it should yield a true statement. For example, let's take this first point here and plug 4 in for the y value. And then we're going to take the slope of 3 and multiply it by the x value, which is negative 3. And then we're going to add 13. So if we take 4 and set it equal to everything over here, all we have to do is solve everything on the right-hand side and see if it is, in fact, equal to 4. If so, that is a sign that we have done our equation correctly. So we have 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9, plus 13. And negative 9 plus 13 is, in fact, equal to 4. So if you were to solve this side of your equation and it equals what is on the other side, then everything checks out and you have done it correctly. And the same should be true for every pair of points that is found in this function table. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so the first thing that we want to do here is write our equation y equals mx plus b. And then we're going to start by figuring out what the slope is of this line. So what you can do is pick any two points from your table. I'm going to go ahead and select this point here and this point here. Now, we're going to start with the difference in y value. So we're starting at negative 3, which is 3 below 0. But then we're going even more below 0. We're moving to 8 below 0, which means from negative 3 to negative 8, we lose 5. So we have to write negative 5 right here. And then over here, we're going from 2 to 4, so we are increasing by a value of 2. So we would say the slope for this line would be negative 5 over positive 2. So in all, we would just say negative 5 halves. Now remember, if you have one of your two numbers being negative and one is positive, the entire value is going to be negative. Now we have to take negative 5 halves, which is our slope, and multiply it by our x value and figure out what our b is going to be. Now remember, when you have a point in your table where 0 is the x value, like we have here, the corresponding y value is going to be your y-intercept. So at the end of our equation, we simply write plus 2 in this situation. And this is the equation that represents the linear relationship found in this particular table. Now, let's say that you were given a function table that did not include a point with a 0 as an x. Then you would have to do a bit more mathematics. So let's go ahead and pretend that this point here does not, well, it exists, obviously, but let's say we do not visually see it in our table. What we would do in this case is we would start off the same way we did before. We would find slope which in this case is negative 5 halves. And then we would write our x. And then we would have to solve for b. But here is how we would solve for b. Simply take one point from your table. I'm going to take this last point here. And substitute those two values in for x and y. And then you have to simply isolate b to solve for b. So the x value at this point is 4. So we're going to go ahead and substitute the x variable with 4. So we have to multiply negative 5 halves by 4. And then we have to go ahead and substitute y with negative 8. All right, now what we're going to do is simplify our equation as far as we can. So we have negative 5 halves multiplied by 4, which is negative 10. And I did that piece mentally really quickly. And I did that by taking 5 times 4, which is 20, which is the numerator. 
And on the bottom, it's really 2 times 1, which is 2. And 20 divided by 2 is 10. So that's how I came up with 10. And because this value is negative and this one is positive, our product is going to be negative. Remember, when multiplying a negative times a positive makes a negative. Now, notice on the right-hand side of our equal sign, we have a negative 10 and the b. The variable b is not yet isolated or by itself, as we say. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 10 and we're going to move it over on the left-hand side by doing the inverse. And the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. And we balance our equation by adding 10 on the other side as well. Now, on the left-hand side here, we have negative 8 and positive 10, which is positive 2. And on the right-hand side, all we have remaining is b. And that is the value of the y-intercept, which we already figured out when we knew that 0 was the x value, meaning the 2 had to be the y. But like I said, sometimes they're not going to give you this point. So what you're going to have to do is figure out the slope, plug in the x value and the y value for any single point from your table, and then solve for b. And that's what it's going to be equal to in your equation. So what I could do is just go back up here, erase the letter b, now that we know that it is equal to 2. All right. Let's go ahead and do one more example. OK, so once again, we just state our equation, y equals mx plus b. And we are going to figure out the slope of this relationship first. So I'm going to pick any two points. Now this time, instead of picking two points that are right next to each other, which I actually recommend, I'm going to pick two points that are not right on top of each other. Let's go ahead and choose this point and this point. So the first thing we do is we're going to start at 3 and we're going to go to 7. And that is an increase of 4. And for the x values, we went from 0 to 2, which is an increase of 2. So the increase in the y values was 4 and the increase of the x values was 2. Now notice that 4 over 2 is something that can be simplified. And 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So that is what our slope is equal to. Now the only reason that I selected two points that were not right on top of each other is just to demonstrate that you would ultimately end up with the same slope, no matter which two points you selected. So we're going to go ahead and replace the variable m with 2. And once again, we have a point in our table that has 0 as an x value, meaning that the y value is the y-intercept, in this case, positive 3. So that's how easy it is to figure out the equation of a linear relationship in y equals mx plus b form. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Mesa that math.